quick trivia question. How do we get the name Pentecost? 50 days. 50 days. Are they 50 days? I think there's something else. So, as we read in the Acts, what does it say here? So, in the Acts, which talks about the miracle of Pentecost, okay, um, now when the days of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And as it goes on, it eventually says how the miracle happened, and then they went out, and there were tons of different people in the audience that they were speaking to, from different nations. Why was there so many people there? Because Pentecost was a name that kind of came after. But what it was, this was the Jewish feast of the Feast of Weeks. Okay, Feast of Weeks. And it was five weeks, cleverly so, that led up to this feast, and on the, at the end of the Feast of Weeks, what they would do is they would come, and they, it would be like the harvest was, was getting ready, because we finished the rainy season, and now like the fruits and the vegetables and the harvest had come. So at the beginning of the Feast of Weeks, what happened was that they would come and give up the first fruits, okay? It was five weeks, okay? So Penta comes into there, but five weeks... And, and it turned out to be on Pentecost. So that's where the, like, the origin of Pentecost comes from. It was originally the Feast of Weeks, which took five weeks, ending on the, the end. And it matched up nicely with the 50 days. So now we call it the Feast of Pentecost. So that's the origin of the Feast of Pentecost. Okay? That's the name of Pentecost. Now... I really prayed hard about today's sermon, and it came from a very, like, trusted source. Um, the sermon of today actually comes from Elijah's, my son's children's Bible. Um, I know you're laughing, but it's true. Um, what, what Sarah and I do with Elijah at home is, is we read the same story for, like, like, almost two weeks or something like that, and we try and do it kind of leading up to the feast. All right, so like during, like we read, like every week during Lent, we read like whatever the story was leading up to that week and so on. And, and so like we've been kind of preparing for the Feast of Pentecost for the last like week or two weeks. I've been reading the same story in the Bible. And as I was reading with him this week, um, I think his Bible does a really good job of summing it up, okay? Because we try and like at the end of every story, give him like one line. To just like think about. Okay, one line to think about. And in his Bible, it says, The Holy Spirit came to help us tell others to be God's friends. That's a good sentence. The Holy Spirit came to help us tell others to be God's friends. I was reading it. Holy Spirit came to help me, to help you, tell others of God. And even though we've been reading the story for a week, like I continue to repeat it. The Holy Spirit came to help me tell others to be God's friends. Simple. But it's true. And if we look at the Gospel of today, which comes from John chapter 15, let's read 15 verse 26. It says, But when the Helper comes, who I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me. He will testify of me. And you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So he's essentially telling the disciples that the Holy Spirit is going to come down. And what the Holy Spirit will do, the mission of the Holy Spirit is to testify of who God is. Testify of who Jesus Christ is. And what he has done for us. And you, having traveled with me for the last three years, witnessed or saw, like know the crucifixion, witnessed my resurrection by infallible proofs. Okay, you know who I am, you know what I said, you know what my mission was. You come and you can see, is the Holy Spirit testifying of me or not? 
You can bear witness. You can say whether the Spirit is or is not testifying of me. Holy Spirit will come and He will testify of me and you will bear witness of it because you know me. So the Holy Spirit has a mission. The mission of the Holy Spirit is to testify who Jesus was and what He did for you and me. Testifying of the type of God that loves us. It's a very clear mission. It's a very clear and it's a very simple message with the goal we want people to be friends with God. We want people to have a relationship with God. That is the mission and the purpose of the Holy Spirit coming down to dwell in us. And, and, and Jesus said, it's better that I go away so that you can experience what it is to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Right now, like, it's hard for you to do things because I'm here and, and you, like, you're trusting and you're leaning on my physical presence to do everything. But now I need to go away and think of it as like he's taking the training wheels off the bike. Taking the training wheels off the bike and say, let's go. But I'm not going to let, just let you go alone. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit has one mission. To testify of God. And when I continued to think about this, I would look back and I would ask myself sometimes, like, why do I not feel the Holy Spirit in my life sometimes? Why do I like come and say like, okay, the Holy Spirit, like, man, does amazing things. Twelve men, middle of the day, all of a sudden speaking like tons of different languages. Everybody's hearing it. The Holy Spirit is capable of amazing things. And I'm asking myself like, why am I not feeling it? Why am I not experiencing that sort of power? That sort of like, <clears throat> sometimes there are just no words. <clears throat> okay. And, I, and then I came to a simple question. I said, well, is my mission the mission of the Holy Spirit, or is it not? Is my mission the same as the Holy Spirit, or is it not? Holy Spirit came with a mission, and it was a, a, a simple and very direct mission, and it was completely in line with the mission of Christ for salvation. And he continued the work. The, this, the mission is clear. But I asked myself, Am I trying, do I want the power of the Holy Spirit to come in and then let me manipulate it to use it towards whatever my desires are? Or can I align my mission with the mission of the Spirit? Because if, if, if my mission is to do one thing, well then the Holy Spirit is saying like, well no, my mission is to do this. My mission is to testify of God. And, and I'm not going to be bent or used or tricked or manipulated to complete your mission. My mission comes from God. And if we really want to begin to feel the power of the Holy Spirit, then we got to bring our mission in line with the Holy Spirit. Now testifying for God takes on many shapes and forms and can be done essentially anywhere. That's the beauty of the Spirit because it transcends all boundaries, all barriers, and all places. Like, for example, in a marriage, okay, between husband and wife, the Holy Spirit should be there. We the the same praise that the, the same hymn of Pia Nemba that we sing, which was called the descent of the Holy Spirit, is the same one that we sing during the sacrament of matrimony. That the Holy Spirit comes and descends on the two, and the two become one. And in the marriage, what we should be seeing between the two is a testimony of Jesus Christ in both of your lives. As a parent to your child. Say, like, you have the relationship, but your relationship, when it's you know, geared towards and focused on you know, testifying as a parent to your child that this God that, that you like drag them every week to on Sunday is worth living for, that's a testimony to Jesus Christ in your different professions, in your work. Yes, it's, it's what you do like majority of the week, but do you see it as an opportunity to say, 
can I testify of the Lord wherever I am? Cubicle, office, school, can you testify? Because, yes, it's difficult, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize how difficult it is. But there's a lot of power to overcome the difficulties when the mission is aligned. When your mission is not to just be the best student, but your mission is to be the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life, that can be done anywhere. And when we begin to align the mission of our life, then we begin to feel the power of the Holy Spirit moving through us. But the question is, the Holy Spirit clearly declared What's his mission? But do we know ours? But do we know ours? Between your family, your friends, your work, your schooling, whatever stage in life you're at, what's your mission? And if you really want to feel the power of the Holy Spirit, then bring your mission in line and say, at my work or at my school or whatever I'm doing, I can be a testimony to God. And I can use the Holy Spirit to help me tell people they can be God's friends. It's simple. But a simple story goes a long way. And a simple message. It's a beautiful message. If anybody wants the Bible, I'd be happy to send you a copy. (laughs) But so today, we celebrate. Today we celebrate because today is a beautiful day in the church because many have heard. Like we, we commemorate the number that heard the gospel in their own native tongue. And that was beautiful because when we hear things in our own language, it touches us. When we can understand them, like what is being said to us, then we're able to have an intelligent conversation with God. God today met people, nations, where they were. God met the people of nations where they were. And that shows us the type of God that He is. He is the God that reaches for us. He is the God that reaches for us. Not us perpetually reaching for Him and saying, uh, 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 uh. No. He is the God that reaches for you and me. Where we are at. Is it difficult? Yes. But do we have a Holy Spirit that when we join the mission of the Spirit gives us power to overcome? Absolutely. You can go back and read the Gospel of today because it says you will be thrown out of synagogues, you will be thrown and you will be tortured and people will persecute you and say they're doing a good thing. But don't worry, those difficulties, the power of the Spirit can overcome in you and me. But can I be in line with this people? And glory be to God forever. Amen.